Welcome to Her Story, Our Story, One Hour of Power. Meet your host, Stephanie Wall, and your co-host, Hope Jackson. Are you tired of feeling like you don't have the power to make all of your dreams come true? Women are powerful. You're a woman, and you know that women are powerful. But sometimes it's hard to remember how much power we have when the world around us makes us feel powerless. And that is why I created Her Story, Our Story, One Hour of Power. It's an online community where women can come together for support, encouragement, and inspiration so they can remember their own power every day. So join us on our mission to empower women by joining Her Story, Our Story, One Hour of Power today. Hey, new members. So let's go. Join us at Her Story, Our Story, One Hour of Power. Fired up. Anybody else fired up? So I am Speaker Stephanie. Stephanie Wall, the Tower of Power, your host, your transformational architect. I'm so excited to about our guest, Dr. David Banks. But y'all know, like we always do, we got to start things out with decency and order. So I'm kicking it over to my favorite gal, Hope Jackson. Hope, take it on away. Good evening, everyone. As we give honor and glory to God, we're just going to open in prayer. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for this one hour of power. We thank Dr. Banks uh, for saying yes to be on this show tonight, Lord Father God. We just pray that someone will receive a word, some information that will just help them to transform their lives and take one step forward and moving towards what God has for them. Lord Father God, we just ask that you bless our guests, bless the host of this show, and just continue to bless them and do what it is that you need to do in their lives. And all things we ask in your precious name. Amen. So... First, I just want to introduce myself. I am Hope Jackson. Of course, I am the co-host of Her Story, Our Story. And again, I give honor to the founder, Miss Stephanie Wall, for allowing me to go side by side with her. We're like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So, you know, <laughs> if you get that good mixture, that's what we are, peanut butter and jelly. But um, I am also the owner and founder of Always Hope. And Hope if you know the definition of hope is to believe in the things that you cannot see and always hope is just to remind you that no matter what you go through in life, that God is always going to lead and guide you through it. Even in the darkest hours, God will always be at the forefront leading and guiding. You may not see him, but he's always walking before you. So that is what always hope is, is just helping people to remember that no matter what we go through, there is always hope. So, um, so David, I have a fun icebreaker tonight. I love looking for these icebreaker questions because sometimes I like some crazy ones. So tonight, I have found this one. It says, if you could be in the Guinness Book of World Records, what record-breaking feat would you attempt? Oh, wow. Oh, oh wow. Wow. <laughs> I would, okay, I think I'm ready. I'm ready, Hope. I, I, I'm ready. Uh, I would really like to be recorded as one man impacting every person in every continent. Ooh, I like yeah. that. That I, is really the power, cool. The power of one, one person impacting every person in every continent yeah that's what i would love to be in the guinness book of world records that's powerful that is definitely a record breaker so i look forward that 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 that's a possibility now we've manifested it hey hey i hope i like it (laughs) so i'm gonna ask you one other question is one i typically ask if you had the choice to vacation um, either in the mountains or the beach, which one would you choose and why? Oh, I'm already ready for these answers. I'm already ready. <laughs> it would definitely be the beach. It would definitely be the beach. <laughs> 
I, I'm, a, I'm a beach bum. I, I like the mountains, but it's too many things in the mountain. You know, bear. It's too many other creatures and stuff. But in the beach, you know, you, uh, I, yeah, definitely beach. That's good. You know, that's a theme here for everyone on this show. I think we've only had one person who said that they would go into the mountains. Everyone else. Uh-huh and a lover of the beach so we we welcome you to the club so we can all we're all gonna retire at some beach in some uh island somewhere we just gonna buy it up and we just gonna own it and have our own little yeah that's what we're gonna do very nice we're gonna own our own island and we're gonna have other people there we're gonna make our living and our retirement off of that hey (laughs) Hey, just just save a please little side of the beach for me let's save a little side for me (laughs) Um, so, what is your five-word story? My five-word my five word story would be empower people succeeding from within. That's that's what I'm a, that's what I'm all about. That's why I truly believe God has put me on this earth to really empower people so they so that they can succeed from within. You said succeed within? Yes. Empower people succeeding from within. I like that. That's good. I can't wait till we get to dive in and pick these words apart and find all about you, David, and everything that you have going on. So at this time, I am going to turn it back over to Miss Stephanie Wald or Tower Power so we can get into the meat and potatoes of this conversation. There you go. All right, thank you. Ooh, we're gonna come back to this. All of this, Hope and I are gonna be back and forth and back and forth. So just be prepared to hear from all this, hey. all this goodness. All right, so listen, <laughs> you all know we got. I gotta tell you, you already know who my who my co-host is. She told you, and I already told you who I was. But you know, here's the thing. You know, I empower women, empower women to transform their lives to transform their relationships, to transform their finances. I am not just the tower of power and has everything to do with how tall I am and with everything to do with all this big smile that enters the room before I, I get there. But it's everything to do with I give all of who I am away to help other people to transform their lives, their relationships, and their finances. So come on into the room so you can hear from Dr. David Banks. So Dr. Banks, so you know I know that you are a runner. Didn't you just run a race? And was there the type of mother one of them type of deal? What was it? What you have going on? Uh, last Saturday, I accomplished, uh, this is my fourth annual half marathon. Wait a minute. Uh-uh. So this is, I, I learned half marathon. So y'all know what? First of all, how many miles is a half marathon? And how many miles 13. is a marathon? One. I'm sorry. Uh, a half a half marathon is thirteen point one miles. A full marathon is twenty six miles. So y'all can go ahead and use those emojis and stuff that's in there to say what <laughs> <laughs> I haven't run thirteen uh, miles and I barely ran it then. When, except for back when I was in the, with the police department in the academy, okay. And then I was trying not to. And, and on what made me keep going is that you would run, we ran through the streets of Baltimore, because that's where I started my career. And I didn't want nobody to see me looking like I wasn't keeping up with everybody. So I, you know, I stayed with it. Like, you know, when, you don't, when you're running and you're in cadence, you can hang. But that's see, right. you do, um, 13, 13, 13 point? 13.1 miles. I know somebody saying right now, yep, I got one for you. <laughs> and this is your... This is you said this is your annual, your fourth annual. You said the fourth annual? Yes, I do it every year, Stephanie. Um, four years ago, uh, I, I wanted to, you know, you're familiar with smart goals. Yes. You know? So I decided, well, I'm smart, so I need to move from smart to stretching. Ah. So I, every year I decided do a stretching goal, something that will stretch me out of my comfort zone. So four years ago, I decided, all right, let's 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 run a half marathon. That's the first one. You know, I love running. I've done 5Ks, 10Ks, but that four years ago was the first time I've ever done a half marathon. And, uh, you know, hey, I did it and I decided, hey, let's do this every year. So it's been nice. 
Wow, wow, well, wait a minute. All right, because you know, I'm all let's let's look, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that too. But let me so gotcha. empowering people succeeding from within. That's right. What does that mean? Tell me what that means. Well, Stephanie, years ago, I, I, I have a premise that I live by, and what I really my foundation of why I do what I do. I truly believe God created us to succeed. That's the way He created us. But I truly believe society has conditioned us to just survive and struggle. So I truly believe that God has placed me on this earth to really help people really make that shift from just surviving and learning how to manifest success in their lives. And, you know, sadly to say, they're looking all around for it, but knowing, not even knowing that it's inside. It's how God created you is really the ingredients for your future success. Uh, so listen, you know, you know I'm getting ready to go on here and read this bio that, you know, you know, but, and I know you say, oh gosh, you know, nobody wants, <laughs> nobody, you know, and I know this because I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> you know, you're like, nobody, don't read the bio. No. So can you, can you just, can you, can you skip a part? Can, no, we're not going to skip any of it because it is so significant. And you know, I, I count myself blessed to have been on your show. I count myself blessed to be, for us running around a whole lot of circles together. I that's said, that's right, right. And, and in a minute, we're gonna be in the same room. You know, it's coming. I, if, I'd have, if I wasn't already out of town, when everybody when, when everybody was in Atlanta, when you guys were in Atlanta, you would have seen me there. Oh, so I'll wow, write you all, wow. I wanna read to you about Dr. David Banks. He is a PA, PhD, he is David, Dr. David Banks, PhD, is a certified behavioral analysis trainer, a wholeness coach, a certified professional career coach, and a certified professional trainer, speaker, and coach for John Maxwell. Okay, we're going to bring you on, okay, to help us out. He is the Director of Leadership and Professional Development human, human, and Human Resources in the city of Chattanooga, Tennessee. His expertise in relationship, leadership development, motivation, and purpose discovery. Wow. You got a little bit, you know, that thing is, you know, that resume is heavy. Dr. Banks <laughs> has worked in the field of personal growth and professional development for over 20 years. See, the rest of us, we, up here, we are, that's my field. But you, this is why we gravitate, because you know what, you know, you go to like-minded people. That's right, that's right. Dr. Banks empowers people locally and globally. If from India, the Philippines, Pakistan, Denmark, Nigeria, and South Africa. He has authored several books and e-books. He is married to his bride, Lady Sylvia. They've been married for 31 years, and they live with their two, three children in Chattanooga. You know, I love that. This is what I'm talking. You know, I love anybody because I, I love to say, Lady Sylvia. You know, I'm <laughs> my king, the Wilga Band. Everybody work knows I come to WB, the Wilga Band. When I start calling my name, it's oh no, that's the Wilga Band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait I a love minute. It. Oh, I love this. So tell me this. What got you into the, the, the field that you're in? What got you to, to even focus on personal and professional development? Besides the fact that well, you use human resources. I think it started years ago. I was a counselor. I was counseling. And I remember um, one day, Stephanie, I was I was working and I was I was working on purpose discovery, working on purpose. So a lady came into the office and she was depressed. She was at a dead end job and she said, Dr. Banks, you know, I'm depressed. I need some help. And I said, hey, I'm working on this purpose discovery. So would you allow me to kind of take you through that? Now, if I take you through it and nothing happens, it doesn't work. We'll go back and counsel you the way we did before. But Stephanie, when I helped her discover her purpose, Stephanie, right then and there, it just, she just said, oh my goodness. And that just really helped me to realize, you know, I, I really need to change. I enjoyed counseling, Stephanie, I, I enjoyed it. But I just realized my season was up with it. So I moved more over into professional development, purpose discovery, leadership development. 
So I loved it and uh, haven't looked back. Well, let me just tell you that you have like the best temperament. Like, I bet you were the best counselor. I would have been like, let me go to Dr. Bang, right? You have, I, I can see where you were an awesome counselor, but I also can see why it's important for you to work on your gifts because you're absolutely phenomenal in this field. I mean, you, you got, you got, you know, you know how some people have the persona. You, before you even say anything, you know, oh, he got something good, he get ready to give me. And you probably, you, I could like see you on a plane and somebody sit beside you and let you can, you know how when somebody sit beside you, you know they're going through, you gotta keep looking at them because you know they're going through something. You know you got something. Number one, you know, you're a person of faith. So number one, the Holy Spirit is telling you, if you don't open your mouth and ask that Stephanie, person. You're reading, my, you, you know you're reading my mail. You're reading my mail. Uh, <laughs> listen, so I can see you not only feel, you know, giving them a word. You know, from God, but I could also see you speaking to their personal and professional development. Like, you know, what's really going on? Digging down deep. You know, because you know we can see the whole person. See, sometimes they can't see themselves. But I swear to you, it's a gift. I, I used to say it's a, gift, a blessing and a curse, but no, it's a blessing. It is. It's a blessing. There's no curse in it. But when you can kind of look at people, you're like, oh, okay. Don't go in there too deep and too fast. And then you, you, they, they're going to push back. But I want to ask you this. What, because you said, now, when I was reading your thing, your a bio, what made you, well, let me back up. That's not what I want to say. I want to ask you this. Because this is a thing, and we talk about this a lot. How important was it for you to invest in yourself, an example, the John Maxwell program? How important is it for a person that's seeking to grow professionally and personally to invest in themselves? Uh, Stephanie, great question. Uh, it, it's it's vital. It is vital. Uh, I just realized years ago, if you don't invest in you, um, no one is going to value you. So I, I think it is vital that every person really takes the time. Uh, I, I look at it as you know, I'm filling my cup. You know, if I am going to help someone else, I need to stay full. And personal investing in yourself, personal professional development, investing in yourself. John Maxwell, Dr. Cheryl uh, Wood, Dr. Les Brown, investing in yourself. Uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, investing in me really positions me to be able to pour into someone else's life. So it's, it's vital. It is, it, it's huge. And I feel like, uh, I, my goodness, I'm okay, well, we, 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 were we working on Les Brown together? Or, or did we do That's like right. A, Les Brown, both did Dr. Sherwood. Oh my God, did you do Dr. Stevie? I mean, you know, here's the deal. This is what I know is once I got past, I don't want to see my, my, you know what I mean? Like, first of all, let, let, this, let's be true. Let's be, let's get real about what I was really getting past. I That's got right. past the fact that I was that I was worthy enough to spend the same money I would spend on somebody else, particularly my children. But That's right. I was worthy enough to invest in me beyond beyond, you know, you college. You follow, you know, you know we right. think, okay, oh, we go yes. to college. We pay for college. Oh, I know it. Right? I know it. But then it's like, wait a minute, you know, this is an investment. But it was worth every penny. And I can't even some days I have to pinch myself like, I can't believe the stages. In the places I, I have it, landed, Stephanie. I know it. So I right. have met so many, you and Zim. I met so many awesome people, and we all over the world. I know, I know. I always say the investment is, is minor to the future reward. You know, we look at, we focus so much on the investment, but when we understand the investment is just the seed for a future reward, and that reward is always going to outweigh, outmatch that initial investing seed. And if people can look at it like that, because you, you and I was the same, you know, when I saw these opportunities and I, when I saw the price tag, I'm like, woo, woo. <laughs> but when I started realizing, wait a minute, David, you understand, this is the seed. When you plant that seed in your life, when that harvest comes, it's gonna way far outweigh that initial seed. And it's every single time, every single time, Stephanie. Let me tell you something. I was the, the the platform I was on earlier. 
for Walden University. It was specifically for change makers and helping youth, helping youth to be change makers. So there were adults on there from nonprofits that were sharing their ups and downs and, and their successes. And one of the young men that was on there, he, oh my gosh, he talked about, he said, let me explain something to you. And I thought, I was like, I was, you know, I had to, I was clapping him all over the place. I said, here's the deal. He said, let me just tell y'all out the gate. Don't get discouraged because you're going to get discouraged. But when you get discouraged, don't be discouraged about this thing because it's normal and it's exactly what happens. And he, and the, the summary of it is this. You need to find people that are strangers to do business with because the people that are in your immediate circle are not going to support your dream. Wow. It's not that they, you know, they, look, and, and listen, if, if, if I had all of the entrepreneurs and that's what we all on here, Across the screen, we would all. If I said everybody, raise your hand if you have somebody that's in your personal circle and you've been trying to, you've been supporting them or whatever, and they never like actually invested in your business, but they invested in somebody else's business doing the exact same thing you did. <laughs> everybody would raise their hand. That's right. That's right. right. We, 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 so we true. can't get all frustrated because here's the deal: they cannot see you as the, the guru that everybody else sees you as because they just see you as what they remember you. It's not personal. That's right. Now, after you blow, blow all the way up now, then they, then they remember, they, they, they get in there. But I wanted, <laughs> so I wanted to say this because I, I realized that when we say smart goals, you know, we always got to remember, you know, the educator in me and educator in you, we know we can't be throwing out a term and not telling them what it means. So <laughs> SMART is an acronym. The S is That's right. specific. Right, the That's M right. is measurable. Measurable. Yep, the A is and for attainable. Is attainable. And the R is for re re relevant. Realistic. Yep, yeah. realistic. Uh, yep. Relevant. And of course, the T, time-based. You got to put a date on it. Right, if you don't have no time right. on that thing. You know, so I, remember, I remember, oh my gosh, I remember when I learned this in college, I, everything was smart goals. You couldn't even talk about the goals. Like, okay. Because that, that's right. the perfect, well, well, when are you going to do this? The bottom line was, when is this going to happen? Because if you just say one, if you don't put a date on it, it's not a goal, it's a dream. It's a wish, right. right? And if it's not realistic, you will never attain it. So let's, you know, you know so let's just, those are the things. So I want you, because right. every guest has to tell us, you know, on this show, we are, everybody has a story. And our group, we said, I called her story, our story, because everybody has a story. And what you know, I'm sure, is with your clients, the first thing that you have to overcome before you can do anything with them is their mindset, yes? That's right, that's right. And the what the and the mindset is not just some old hokey yokey something out there. The mindset is the things that we tell ourselves. That's it's right. the stories, right. you know, and we all have one. So I want yes. you to tell the, the listeners, tell the her story, the, our story, our listeners. Tell us about a time that you experienced something that you had to, an obstacle, a challenge that, and that you had to overcome and how you overcame it. Excellent. Excellent. Very nice. Well, I think it really goes back, Stephanie, to when I was in the um, middle school. I was in middle school. I'm the youngest of my wow. siblings. I have an older brother, older sister, and, um, you know, my dad, you know, he's 6'6", wow. six, six, 300 pounds, a massive man, man. He is a provider like no other. So I've always wanted to um, to please him. So I remember, Stephanie, I uh, tried out for the varsity basketball team and I, and I made it. And I was so excited and I was like, man, I can't wait to go home and tell my dad I made the varsity basketball team. And I was so excited and I was playing it around in my mind thinking I'm going to tell him then we're going to just reminisce and talk about, man, you're going to be the next Magic Johnson, this and that. And Stephanie, when I came home, he was sleeping in his favorite chair. I went over to him and I said, Dad, I made the basketball team. And I thought this, you know, I thought this dialogue was going to happen. And Stephanie, he looked at me and he said, you're never going to amount to anything. You, you're, you're probably never make the NBA. Stephanie, it hit so fast, those words. I just thought, am I dreaming? And then he just went back off to sleep. 
and I was thinking, should I wake him back up and, and ask him again? Because I didn't, I couldn't believe, you know, you know, normally when a traumatic thing happens, you automatically hit denial, but because you don't want to hear it. But then, I, you know, I was like, should I wake him up and ask him again? But then something said, David, what you heard is what you heard. And Stephanie, when that happened, it's like everything inside of me went to question marks. I questioned everything. Am I handsome? Am I smart? It was like everything immediately start forming into question. I question everything about me. Now, you know, and I know when you question and you don't get an answer, nine times out of 10, you're going to come up with a negative. You see what I'm saying? So when I started thinking, am I smart? Okay, nobody told me I was smart. So evidently I'm not. Am I handsome? Nobody said it. So, so I grew up through high school through college, living like that. My self-esteem was just, and right after, probably in the end of college, I read the book by Dr. Miles Monroe, In Pursuit of Purpose. Stephanie, when I read that book, I started realizing, wait a minute, do I really have a purpose? So throughout, got married and really start understanding my purpose. And Stephanie, when I discovered my purpose, that started truly turning those question marks into exclamation points. Because I knew my purpose. And even though I went through that traumatic time when I was in the seventh grade, this is what I learned. My purpose came before my past. Man, Stephanie, right there. Uh -uh, no, you <laughs> oh. didn't. Woo! Oh, yes, right there, there, somebody. Your purpose came before your past. Hope you get that, because I know you snatched that right up. Your purpose <laughs> You know I wrote that down, but wait a minute. Because I was, I wrote down here, I was going to ask you, why is it important to learn your purpose? Okay, speak to it. I'm sorry. I digress. Because... So many times we live from where we have been from. Most people live their life based on what they've been through. You know, you ask a person, well, I've been abused. Okay, that's what you went through. Uh, so that right there, when I realized, wait a minute, my purpose came before my past. Before my dad said this to me, my purpose was created inside of my mother's womb. Psalms 139, verse 16, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So when I start understanding that my purpose superseded any past incident in my life, Stephanie, right there, that changed everything. Because we all have a past, you know? We can do a support group real quick right now. Everybody has something they have been through but when I understood that my past is not who I am, it's only what I've been through. And when I went back to my source, my purpose, that just positioned everything. It didn't erase what my past was because, you know, here I am in my 50s. My dad, my dad did say what he said when I was in middle school, okay? Even though I know my purpose, that incident did happen. But now my purpose far outweighs that incident when I was in the seventh grade. So I spend now more time focusing on my purpose instead of focusing on that incident. And uh, that has changed my life. And that's why I love to do that with somebody else because I had to go through it. And that's why I love helping people understand. That's why you can succeed whether you have been through any kind of dramatic things in your life, abuse, uh, various different things, your purpose is still intact. And once you discover it, that is your compass to your future success. That is your compass to your future success. We're gonna write stuff down over here. <laughs> so let me um, ask you this. Because I want you to repeat this because I love that you talked about Miles Monroe. What was the name of the book again? In Pursuit of Purpose. In Pursuit of Purpose. I love 
me some awesome, but that I, oh, I'm gonna yeah. tell you, I go, YouTube is the listen, YouTube University. If you don't do <laughs> nothing else, you should wake up in the morning and I and listen to some. But the first thing, and let me just y'all know, y'all know, y'all say, here she go, here she go, but this is a fact. When you swing your legs, because we've been talking about physical therapist, you got to swing the legs. You just can't jump off the bed. You got to swing your legs off the, off the side of the bed and you sit up. The first thing you should do when your feet hit the floor is be thanking, be grateful. Talk about gratitude. Talk about gratitude. What you're hey, thankful for that's that morning. It. First of all, be so thankful true. that your feet touch the floor. I mean, feel the floor like, oh, I'm awake, I'm alive. That's right. So true. Start there. Look, okay, because you know you can't go wrong when you start your day with gratitude. Let's start there. I love, I exactly. love to use the analogy because you know we, you know with the subconscious and the conscious mind. But I love that the Steve Harvey just made it so simple. I I, I keep repeating because I love it that he talked about you know when you wake up in the morning. If you if it's all about mindset, if you say, well, it's gonna be a terrible day, your subconscious say, all right. Dr. Davis says, "Forget travel right. days." So the subconscious tells the conscious mind. The conscious mind says, well, "All right," and the conscious mind starts working because that's where your critical thinking occurs. That's and it right. starts working, and it takes you towards everything that you. It's going to make sure your day is bad. It's going to make sure because you've already told your your subconscious, told your conscious mind, it's going to be a bad day. So your conscious mind, right? Because the subconscious don't know the truth between the lie of the lie and the truth, but your conscious mind right. goes right, jump in. What does uh, Les Brown say? Junk in, junk stay. That's right. They don't junk That's out. Right. It stay in. So, <laughs> so if you, you want to have a good day, tell yourself it's going to be a good day. And That's right. go That's toward right. that. So I want you to tell me, now, did you know what you wanted to do? Did you know that you would land in the field that you're in right now? I didn't. I think growing up... Um, I, I really like business, uh, so maybe a, a, a business owner of something. And uh, I remember when I went to college, I was majoring in business until I took my first accounting class, Stephanie. <laughs> Stephanie, when I took that accounting class, I realized this is not where I want to go. <laughs> and my second semester, Second semester in my freshman year, I took my first psychology class, Psychology 101. And Stephanie, it went was like a breeze. I made an A just like that. It just was so natural. But that accounting, oh my God, I'm just studying and studying. It just didn't come natural. But that psychology, it just, I took the first class and I said, yeah, yeah, this, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. You so said I said, that's yeah. That's what I was. I, look, psychology, I was up in there. Baby, I was all on I loved it. But let me tell you something. I wanted to be a nurse. Yeah, so look at yeah, that. I just knew I was going to be an RN. You couldn't tell me. And women, and I, before that, I wanted to be an ophthalmologist. I wanted to be the eye nurse. And you couldn't tell me look I was going to be one and tell. Yeah. I think the sisters, I went in there. <laughs> and that math, them numbers, I was like, wait, man. Wait a minute. <laughs> What I got no, because wait a minute, in graduate school, wait a minute, I'm sorry, first of all, just get your bachelor's, if you graduate, the graduate degree, I thought, when your bachelor's, the statistics almost took me out. I said, what? Oh, yes. <laughs> to this I day, I went into my professor, and I mean, he meet him like this, and I'd be like, Ray, I just want to thank you, because he was like, thank you a lot, he said, look, you know, numbers, math is on our head. And sadly, my people, the must, my, and thank goodness, two of, one of our sons loves math. And I realized I had to stop saying something, and that was this, that we don't like math. And as long as I told myself I didn't like math, I, 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 the struggle was real. As long as I told myself, ooh, statistics, I ain't gonna do this, I was struggling. And one day he said, stop saying that. You got this, you smart. You were, and after that, I, you know, it was a guy sitting beside me, and he was caught me off my paper. I said, so you just wanna see your way through this too. <laughs> All I need is a C, I'm not trying to, right? But I will tell you that I know, I, you couldn't have told me because I was already a, a, a certified nursing assistant. You couldn't have told me that I wasn't going to keep going up and be a nurse. That's just where I thought I was going to be. Then I decided, oh, I could be a doctor. I'm going to be an ophthalmologist. Now, you know, sadly, not sadly, but you know, I, I didn't even think about just keep going in the field as a psychologist because they're, they're doctors, doctors, right? But I, but of course, life happened. 
and all that derailed. And I don't even know, don't ask me how I became to get into law enforcement because it was just, I had all, I had a, a great job with a long title, as my girlfriend Gloria liked to say, a long title and zero cash. I mean, it was like very little cash and I, was, I, needed, I needed more benefits. So yeah. guess who had great benefits and paid more money? The police department. So I bucked up in there and I was the whole time thinking, what in the name of all this good news? I, what am I, they can call me school teacher <laughs> the entire time. To date, I still have to tell people that I, they were like, did you have to wear a real uniform? Like with real gun up? <laughs> yes, yes, I was a patrol command. You gotta show proof, Stephanie. You gotta show proof. <laughs> I'm gonna show them receipts, right? No, don't let me get up and get them now. But look, so I want to, I want you to tell me, so you have, and I saw it when I was on your show. I saw, I saw the receipts. I saw the people from different countries commenting, which is fabulous. Cause COVID did something that for a lot of people that just unthinkable. I don't know why we didn't think before then. Every, for once in a while, everybody was so far away. We couldn't connect. That's right. Now, if you if you are brave enough to get a, and create your own platform, or brave enough to, to just open your door, that's right, and be on a, on on Zoom or wherever you're gonna be on, you can touch lives all over the world. So true. So and true. you do it oh each my goodness. and every week, <laughs> each, every time you get on the computer, you're um, you're you're go live. That's correct. That is correct. There, I was like, look at. It. They can hear from, I mean, like everywhere. And they were telling you where they right. coming from. That was significant. We, most of us are dreaming of this, right? You know, people are dreaming of doing it. And when we say global, you know, I said one million lives transformed. But I realize now, we got the bank that I, every time I open my mouth and I go live, or I go on a computer, I'm touching one million lives because I'm touching this life and that life and you're touching this life and that life and if you're making if you're truly That's doing right. it you're working in your gift your purpose because I love That's right. when you said your purpose came before your past I had to write That's that right. down and I circled it <laughs> so when, when you hear that one back I'll make sure I give you credit for it it is <laughs> this, that is significant so tell me what what is it tell me what you because you have a couple things you do so tell me what it is that you tell me about your company what you do who do you serve and what projects do you have going right now very nice well i have my company is called noble success strategic group where i do training consulting uh coaching and speaking and it all follows back in empowering people uh, to succeed from within one of my platforms is the um, Noble Success Facebook group. So I created that um, January of 2020. Uh, and uh, I just love it. Uh, I, we're up now to 2,200 followers from all over the world. So I enjoy that. Uh, other things that I do, I also, I, I work with churches, do leadership development, uh, do coaching people um, but my my whole goal now is, is really doing global work you know I enjoy the one-on-one coaching I've done that Stephanie I've done that for a number of years I, I really feel like I really want to move and talk with government officials business leaders and just really helping them you know, just really kind of change their uh, trajectory towards success. Are you familiar with um, Charvette? You know, you know Charvette, right? Charvette. Oh, no. don't worry. I'm getting ready to send you. I'm gonna send you a video from her last session. Charvette, uh, she has a radio show. She's global, uh -huh. but Charvette has different speakers that come on, and, and she on her show. And this last one she had, or one before that one. She local here in Maryland and we'll see DC. But all she does, this coach, she herself does it, but she's also that's what she does, you know, her her, her full-time job is governmental grants. And when I tell you, she told us if y'all don't get these grants, if y'all don't stop trying to just get clients when you can get these government grants, 
right, where you can have for three years and write thousands of dollars. Now, she was explaining it was easier to get the state one, the local one, versus the federal. But you, once you get in the federal one, the federal one is not, they're not expecting you to actually do the work. They get you to contract that stuff out. But it was okay. so, she was giving away all the juice and it was so good that I got up off there like, okay, hold on. And she even told you like, listen, you don't, you can, I can help you as a coach or you can go to the free sites. And she told you exactly where to go. My goodness, my goodness. You see the blessing, this is what I'm talking about, the blessing. We worrying about, we got to get out of our own way. And yes, I just do. told the young people, my final words on the, 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 um, Walton University thing was young people, you can absolutely do anything that you want. Absolutely anything that you want. And the only thing, the only person that can stop you is you. That's so true. That's so true. Right? So I want you to tell me. So now you've written books. So yes. what's the book? What's yes. the what it for, okay, so if you got a so you know, we got lots of we got lots of brand new, brand, brand, brand new entrepreneurs. What if out of all your books? Which book would you say if you had if you had a new entrepreneur and you were coaching and you I, I need something I need something tangible I got to touch it which one of those books would be the one you said this this is the one you need to go ahead and hold on to? Uh, I I have several of them. Uh, I have children's books. I have two marriage books. I have some e-books, uh, and I think the e-books. I really like the e-books because the e-books they are quick and they are quotes. Because when I write books, Stephanie, my biggest thing is I want to get you thinking. That's what I want. So many times books are set up to you. It tells you how to think. That's not how I want my ebooks. My ebooks are really set up, really triggering people to think. So I've done one for, you know, being motivated um, and uh, leadership. So I would say really look at those um, those ebooks because it, it, it's going to trigger you to think. And I did a, a co-author one uh, said it starts with me and it's more leadership, just a book of questions to really help people. Because uh, the biggest thing, sometimes books give information. What I like to do with my books is trigger revelation. Ooh. Because information is information is ooh that's good, Doctor Banks. That's that came from that that that's Doctor Banks' information. Well, I want to make sure I trigger you to move from Doctor Banks' information to it becomes Stephanie's revelation. Because once something becomes revelation, it it's yours. It's not mine anymore. It's yours, and that is what I uh, really want to do in people's lives. Woo! Hope, I know you like, uh-uh, that right that no, look, look, Hope. Look. <laughs> so wait a minute now. Okay, so you know I got it. So Dr. Ben, are you also, are you a pastor? I am, I am. So you got this, listen, cause, cause like, you got a word, because I would be I'm sitting up in there like, wait a minute, I, you look like you the one, I'm like, don't come up in this, don't come up in this service without your notepad, because you got to catch this, you got to catch this information. <laughs> okay, because you dropping all kinds of nuggets all over the place here, and I'm glad I got my pen and my pad as usual. So, of course, <laughs> what, uh, I believe I got, look, Better Life Journal. You know, we, that's from an investment, you understand? Hey, <laughs> beautiful, I want, beautiful. I want to know, where can folks get the ebook? Like, how can they get the ebook? And how can they join your net noble success? All right, I'm going to put, I'm going to put that in the chat. Okay. Uh, noble. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So uh, it's facebook.com slash groups, Noble Success Group. If they go to that and join that, that's where I kind of have everything. I do have a website, drdavidlarrybanks.com. I'll put that in there as well. So those are the two places um, I kind of house information there, DR. And that's perfect. And so, you, and and, the, and I will tell you all this wealth of information because I, I I am in the noble group. I'm in that one, and I'm telling you right now, I love my 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 phone will tell me, uh, Dr. Banks is live. I will be like, let me go up in here now. Let me go up and see what's going on. And I mean, it, I'm tickled to pieces 
every time I go in there, I'm like, hey, you look at this. You got the people from the Philippines and the, I mean, they in there. You know, you gotta go on. You can listen. Look, look. You if you are not, I want to say. Let me get it right now. Y'all can fix me. You and and Dr. Banks fix me if I mess this up. Come in there and dress it back up. I've heard it said so many ways, but I just read it up again somewhere today that was talking. It said, listen. If you're a group of six and five of the people you with don't read books and they don't, they're not interested in education, you probably are the sixth person, right? If you're around that's six, right. if the six of you and five of the people you with, they broke and that's who you hang with all the time, then you're the sixth broke person and so on and so <laughs> forth, right? And so I was, I did a, gosh, over a year ago, I did, I want to say like, but quoting my friends, like they, that's when they realized I all of a sudden was, was, could be a speaker, I guess. And I was, well, I mean, I could, they realized that I was really serious, I guess, about what, when I was in the, uh, I was doing a live. And I talked about birds of a feather flock together. That's right. And I told them that I don't want to be flocking with them. If I'm going, if I, if you were, I realized, because I was in a place, was in a, in a place in my life, Dr. Banks, that I was, I wasn't progressing forward. And I kept, I was felt like I was stagnant and I was making bad choices and I was just doing the same, I kept getting the same results so I keep doing the same thing. And I was like, well, what is the problem? The common denominator was who? Me. Wow. So, you know, and, yes. and nothing is worse than looking at the assess, to self-assess. I'm going to tell you right now, just on the, even on the the call today, I mean, the radio show today, it, I told, it hurt me. It, 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 just, it still doesn't, it doesn't feel good coming and hearing myself say it. But the truth of the matter, it was a point in my life that my self-esteem was so low that I could stand on top of it. And then wow. when, you, when your self-esteem is low to that level, people will manipulate and take advantage of you. And you will continue to make bad choices. And you will become all those ugly things. And you will be ugly. You'll be somebody, you, I, I was somebody I didn't even like. You know, my, my answer, everything was all negative, right? And so it, everything is, if it was something I couldn't do, instead of just saying, you know, I wish I could do that. It was like, I don't like to do that kind of stuff. I wouldn't do that. Wow. You know, that was very negative. And it was not, one day I realized that's not true. I do want to do those things. I, but I didn't think I could, so I had to I had to denounce it. Yes. And, and I realized, okay, why am I, where am I getting on? Is that, is that really who I am? And I realized the people that I was around, they one, you gotta watch this now for the folks that are watching. You know, they talk about the don't be the class clown. That's right. Well, I remember when I was in, I went to Howard Community College because I was trying to gather myself up to get to the university. And I remember I was in class and one of my friends, I mean one of my besties, she's like, girl, let's not go to class today. Let's go watch the hypnotist. It was a hypnotist in the in the the, 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 the big uh atrium. And I wanted to go see him, and the teacher was like, Stephanie. You're here for an education. She's here for recreation. I said, oh my. Oh, look at here. He snatched look my here. entire soul. And I was like, <laughs> okay. You can see up until that moment, I'm talking when the school was open, it could be a snowstorm. Be three cars in the parking lot. One of them was mine, my little beat up car. I was trying to get the thing done. I was, I had a mission because I knew this was my last. I made lots of mistakes and I was gonna fix it. Me and God had a decision. He said, if you just look, you talk to me, I, you said you can do it. And he said, I can do all things through him. So look here, I'm gonna go up in here. If these people can get it, I can get it too. So I was in class one time, I'm talking in a, in a, a computer room, it would be nobody but me and the teacher. The wow. rest of the students didn't show up. So she was like, and I kept going. And you know, to this date, I have not stopped growing, progressing, and that person, Unfortunately, she didn't choose the path that I chose. Wow, wow, wow. So I said to you, I want to know, let me see the time of this, because the people will be like, Stephanie, come on, I don't, you know, are we good? So this is the part of the time that we open up. And you, you put in how they can reach, you put in how they can reach you. Did yes. You, you put in how they can get the book. And wait a minute. That's right. And also, I need you because you have a wonderful show. And That's which right. is, okay, when is, your, when is your show air? When, when do you have it? It is every Friday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, Noble, it's on the Noble Success Group, Conversations with Dr. David Banks. And it is, uh, it is bona fide. 
global. <laughs> Worldwide. <Okay. laughs> and how can and how can someone um, be, be a, a guest on your show? And what are the type of guests that you, you see? What are the topics? Well, I'm, I'm really, uh, the whole focus is, is really revolved around their expertise. That's my whole focus. My whole focus is how do you manifest success in your life concerning business, concerning relationships. Um, so it, that's that's the kind of the framework. I, I really, whatever the guest is, when I interviewed you, I really kind of wanted to uh, just revolve around your expertise and your passion and just always tell every guest, at the end of the day, we want to give practical principles to help people manifest because so many times we People worry about whether they are going to be successful. And Stephanie, I said that's that's you don't worry about whether you're going to be successful. The focus is what are the principles, the ideas, the the steps to manifest success. Success is really set up to be manifested because we were created to succeed, but we have to have the steps, the principles, the practical steps to manifest it. I love that. I love it. So you guys heard that. You heard it here. So how do you manifest success in your life? If you're interested in being a guest, and I hope that you are, because if you're not sharing your story, why are you are you sharing your gifts, your talents, and your abilities? Ooh, you're holding on to the world. You can't, you will That's not, right. you cannot be blessed unless you bless others. All right, so this is what we're going to open this up thing up here. Let me, let me check. you're muted you know that happens at least once a time we're here all right so this <laughs> is an opportunity for those who are in the room to speak up and say make you have share your comments share you know we, we share our road we give the we give the roses right now when we can smell it or ask your question so who's up first so Dr. Banks, this is Hope. Um, first of all, just again, yes, I want to say thank you for saying yes and coming on the show. Um, this is amazing. Like everything you said, like I really love the part where you talked about your purpose came before my path. And it actually reminds me of the scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. God knows the right. purpose and the plans he had for our lives. So that was amazing. And it just seems like everything tied into what my church message on was on this week we're on a we're doing a series and it's called maturish um so we're in the adult stage this week i think yeah we were in the adult stage and she was talking about the promises that god has for us you know they're already out there it's just up for us to put in the work to get them so Very you know i really like how you like to me this was just like a message just to solidify what was already preached to me you you preached a whole nother word be honest with you so, but I do have one question for you so say someone is listening um, or will listen to the replay and they're not sure what their purpose is what is one thing that you would tell them on how to determine their purpose oh wow oh beautiful question beautiful question well I created a program I created a program to help people because so many times years ago, I kept reading books on purpose, but hope at the end of the book, I'm thinking it kept telling me you have one, you have a purpose. And I'm thinking, how come, I, how come at the end of the book, I haven't discovered it, what's going on? So I realized whatever you don't see, you create. So I just realized, all right, so there are five questions hope that I give a person so only I'm going to ask I'm going to share one of them I'm going to share one of them because your purpose is inside of you so I always tell people I am here to help you discover not tell you I don't tell you your purpose I help discover it why because you were born with it so the first question that I ask anyone to help discover their purpose is this question here what do you see in society that burdens you or grieves you? Because hope your inside purpose is a solution to an outside problem. Your inward purpose is a solution to an outside problem. Most people don't know what's inside, but I am trained 
to figure out if you don't know what's inside i can start figuring out when i ask you this question what problem do you see in society that burdens you because whatever that problem is nine times out of ten when you retrace it back inside of you you are the one that has the solution to that problem wow that was amazing again <laughs> and i really hope i mean i got something out of this and i didn't i didn't already click as stephanie knows i'm a multitasker at times so i'm googling and clicking links and so i did just join the um i put the application in to join the facebook group hey beautiful beautiful i am all about 2021 walking in purpose so oh, thank you again excellent. For being a guest and i look forward to just connecting with you in the future um so i'm gonna open it up and let someone else come on if they have any questions come on in y'all get these questions in <laughs> my turn my turn my turn hi dr bang so my name is julie robinson i'm actually a uh, host jackson's sister um oh beautiful I'm hi julie <laughs> hi now I'm hoping my host wrote notes because I'm driving while I pulled over because I knew this was the talking time. So I'm in Royal Farms parking lot right now. Now, um, but I'm hoping she took notes because there was so much information that was given um, that definitely, I'll say, pertains to me because one of the things I've always had an issue with is discovering my purpose. Like, oh, you live wow. life, you live wow. life, you live life, but I don't know what my purpose is in life. Um, so I this has touched all bases, and definitely the answer that you gave the host question, because I was going to ask you, is if you found your purpose once you read those purpose books, but you already said no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, unfortunately, uh, those books were great, even though I love Dr. Miles. He was a personal person to me. Uh, but in the in pursuit of purpose, it just really explains that you have one, but it didn't help you to discover it. So I guess um, the question would be like, at what age did you find yourself, your purpose, so that you could start living in it because as you were mentioning we feel like our past molds us to the that's person right. that that's we right. are today but if you were already born with that purpose inside it doesn't matter what good bad or indifferent went to your life up to this stage you still have a purpose and that purpose can draw you to success so Man. wow, <laughs> Julie. I don't know if we met in an, in 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 another life, but I tell you, honey, you got that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you summed that up totally perfect. So, I, I you know, I'm a man. All right, uh, my beautiful bride. She's had three children, and it. I can only I can only kind of picture it. You know, when I was in the birthing room with my wife when she was delivering those children. When that baby was ready to come, that baby was ready to come. And I kind of liken that, Julie, to your purpose. When you decide, I'm ready to discover it, and you get the right questions asked to you, because that's what your purpose is looking for. Your purpose is looking, you give me the right questions. Because when any, anytime I help somebody discover their purpose, I say, answer the questions according to what your purpose is revealing to you instead of what you are thinking. I don't need you to think about the questions. I need you to listen to them because your purpose knows every answer to each of these five questions. Mm -hmm. So I want you to get with your uh, sister, Hope, and uh, get on my noble success and uh, inbox me and I'll be more than happy. I you, Julie, Julie, this is what I'll do. I'll give you a complimentary session with me. Thank you. And I Thank will you. help you discover your purpose. You're that, going to be blown that's away. That's awesome. <laughs> that means the world to me. You just don't know how much that means to me because I've been struggling to find that for the longest time. And, and you being willing to help me, it, it, it's 
I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Hey, Julie, struggle no more, honey. Struggle no more. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to discover your purpose before this year is out. Before this Thank year you. is out. So please wow. get in touch with Hope and Stephanie, and um, we'll, we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Thank you, Listen. thank you, thank you. Look, Hope, Hope, her head snapped up like, I need my complimentary confession. <laughs> I said, uh-oh, uh-oh. You see she over there dancing, but. Um. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm just ready for you to know what it is that God has inside of you so that you can walk in it and, and to work with those that are attached to you. Because each one of us has someone that is attached to us because of our purpose. And that's that's all I want for you, sis. Right, right. No, no, I understand. I understand. And that was a discussion I had this week with someone. I was saying how. You know, people always say how the Holy Spirit speaks to them or they hear the word of God or everything, but I haven't been able to discern that voice in my own head. So I can't discover a purpose if I don't get on the right track and get my mindset to be able to hear what's out there and to hear myself because the purpose, like you said, it's within me. But I think it's That's so right. buried under all the issues and the, the struggles and, and the strifes that I've gone through in life that it's so muffled that it's silent. That thing right there, no, we're gonna, she gonna be, listen, when you, when, by the time she get, get done, she gonna be having a show. We be jumping up on her show, day. <laughs> <laughs> this is lovely. I love it. I love it. But wait a minute, hey, y'all. Awesome. David, we wanna honor you, man, because it's already 7 30. Now, if you got to jump off, let us know because we already went over. Hey, I'm good. I'm okay, good, well, good. Now, there's a Brenda. Brenda, did you wanna come on and say anything? Brenda said, I'm listening. You know, sometimes you know, you know, some of the folks who may jump on, they somewhere they cannot talk. They can listen or they can watch. <laughs> they watch and, and they're like this. So, what, so and she may even be in the chat sometimes. Okay, so for those of you that are listening, I know this replay, you're going to be replaying it over and over again. But the, and we will put all of the contact information in the group under uh, Dr. Banks' picture so you can go back and get it. So, no worries. But we got it. So, <laughs> uh, Dr. Banks, I want you in closing, before I close all the way, I want you to give me your final words. What would there be the one thing that you would want the folks to know? And particularly those, because you know, find the purpose is like number one thing. That's right. And you know, this is a great example. We talk about every every week that we bring on, we have digital competition. We bring on different guests because every voice, you can, it's like, you these are all my children, but your children, do they understand? They will not hear the message from you. But you bring somebody else on, they'll hear the message. And That's you right. were the voice that you needed to hear. And so I so yeah, appreciate right. you. So what's the word? What do you have for those folks that also they need to they they're a place of they're stuck, is either purpose or something else in their mindset? What do you have for them? Excellent. Well, I, I wanna and again, Stephanie, hope you beautiful ladies, thank you so much again for you keep saying I said yes I couldn't have said yes if you didn't ask give the invitation so I appreciate both of you very very much but I want to encourage your listeners Stephanie I always go back to how we were originally designed and the way we were originally designed we were really designed in three dimensions the first dimension is purpose when God created you the very first thing he created was your purpose of why you existed. The second is potential. Potential. What is potential? It's this potent reserve power sitting on the inside of you waiting for an opportunity. Purpose, your potential only comes out when an opportunity is there. You don't ever develop an opportunity. Your potential stays inside of you. And then the third thing is your path. So I want people to understand that's how you were originally. Purpose, potential, your path. Now, Stephanie, this is what has happened. We live in a society where it's flipped. So we live by our past 
underneath that is our potential. And just like Julie perfectly said, her purpose is where? Down deep, under all of that other stuff. So I want to encourage everyone that your past only makes up one third of who you are. Your past only makes up one third of who you are. Because why? You were created according to Psalms 139 verse 16, your past and potential. So if you know, hey, Stephanie, if you know anything about math, two thirds is more than one third. All right? You see what I'm saying? So, Julie, you got to understand, Hope, Stephanie, uh, Brenda, and every all the other listeners, you have to understand you are walking around with two thirds that's already built inside of you, your purpose and potential. So why is that so important? It just put things in perspective. Julie has a past, Hope has a past, Dr. Banks has a past, Stephanie. But guess what? Regardless of what your past is, it, all, it still only makes up one third. You will always have two thirds outweigh you at all times in your entire life. Stephanie, when I got that revelation, it changed everything. Let me tell you something. He didn't wrap that thing up with a bow and went on here and set it over in the corner and put it up for the, the, the postman and the courage to the next person. So ain't nothing else for me to tell y'all, but to tell you is, listen, here's the deal, as I have to always end it, here's the deal. We all have a light. The light that's inside of us. And I believe in the Holy Trinity, so I believe the light that's inside of me is the Holy Spirit. And if you're a person of faith, I believe the light inside of you is the Holy Spirit. And if we don't shine our lights, our light, yeah. that light is those blessings we give to the world. And if we don't shine our light, then the blessings are not going to hit its intended targets. That means that God can't do his work. So please shine your light. And I mean, give it away. Put it out there. And as Lisa Nichols said, if your light is too bright for you, then you put on some sunglasses. Glasses. And if it's too light, too bright, I can't get my words together. Too bright for others, ask them to put on theirs. We all, listen, go up there and shine your light. And here you are. I, got to, I wrote it down. Because that, that, that's two-thirds, right? That's all I need. That's it. That's all I need. And so I want y'all to go out there and understand. I want you to flip it back up. That's we right. want the purpose up on the top, the potential. And our past is in the past. All right, so till next week, Dr. Banks. Everybody join me and give Dr. Banks a hand. This has been fabulous. <laughs> And for the replay, people, make sure you put an R for the replay. Those of you who have been here, to, once we post this video in our chat, well, it's already in there, but go in the chat, and I want you to go in there and put your, your words, what you learned, what you, what you, what your thoughts to encourage the other folks to make sure that they watch the replay. You know, sometimes you see the recording, you don't go back to it. But this, if, by not going back to it, you're missing a blessing. For those of you that are watching it on YouTube, for those of you who are watching it on Facebook, in Her Story, Our Story, don't miss your blessings. Go watch, go back and watch it again. If you missed something, go back to the part that you missed. But write down notes because you know if you don't write it down, you don't you don't absorb it, you don't maintain it, you don't keep it, you don't retain it. All right. So right. my name is Stephanie Wall. I'm your Tower of Power, but more importantly, I am your transformational architect. See you next Wednesday, same place, same time with our next guest. See you all. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>